Welcome to Mad About 3D. My name is Darren Winfield and I'm going to try to answer a question that I asked last year which I found out about last year and I'd like to address it because I've had someone ask the same question. So I've got a spy mesh component which has no collision at runtime loading from the menu. So what, I'm, what my problem is, was is that if I go from... where is it? Here it is. If I press play I go to a menu, this is, this is the menu level. If I go into a new level, then this spline mesh component, which is this guy here, I would just fall straight through. So what I've, it took me a while to figure out how to do it. Um, so let's just break that down right now. So within this scene, let's find, let's find my floor. Here's my spline mesh, just to give, what I've done is created a trigger and just to prove that it is a spline mesh component, let's just make something. So I'll just grab this guy and I'll just go Alt, move it across to here and I can just have this spline that is beautifully um, colliding and going up, down and that's really cool. So um, let's break it down. So I'm going to go into my blueprint and this is... I was teaching this in my game development class and <laughs> it took me three days to figure this one out. So this is the component. All I have in the scene is a, defiance, a default scene root uh, plus a spline. Um, the properties, variables that I have is the spline uh, itself, uh, a spacer and tangent control and both of those are floats. And let's have a look at what I did. So I took the spline mesh, I got the length and by the way, most I'm assuming that you've already done this before, but let's just talk through it anyway. And I divide the length of the object by the spacer variable and make sure you compile so as you can make sure that there is a variable there. Then under division by roots, you have a, re a remainder and the remainder is going to be the last um, index of the for loop. And we're obviously starting on zero. Some students muck that up. We'll go along here before we move down to here, so the index is going to be multiplied. But <clears throat> we're going to add the spline mesh component. Now, this is where the mistake is. Do not tick it here. If you have ticked it here and you compile it, well, build it again. I found that, well, you might be able to do it, but I found that even unticking this will just muck up the whole um, <clears throat> compiling. So obviously, add your static mesh, add your material, set the collision to true, set the start and end position. And we're getting up to the magic in a minute. So this, the space is going to be multiplied by the index value, which will get my get the location at distal on space. That'll be the start. By the way, it needs to be at world, not local, on the new coordinate system on 4.10. Um, and this is the little bit of math that fixes the pro problem. You've got to take a reference to the default. Basically, drag that out. You need to get the world location of that and then you've got to take this location and minus it by the world location and then that will be the start and end position. Once again, and I'm sure that you've done the videos already on the tangent control multiply, but this is the little bit of math that you have to do to fix up your um, project, which is pretty cool. Awesome. So let's just review that once again because it's the I like uh, making sure that the end of the video is correct. So I'm taking the spline, get the length, divide it by the spacer. The return goes into the loop, start and end. We begin our loop, which is building uh, mesh components. Do not, do not, do not tick that. Um, let's go down this way this time. So the index is going to be multiplied by the spacer. And if I go grab the spacer, it might be look a little bit better if I just do that. Index is multiplied by the spacer um, because the index is zero. Multiply zero with start of the line and so forth. And I'll just just to clean this up a bit here. I'll just let's just add this, and then that's going to give us the starting position. To get the end position, we're going to add the spacer to it. That'll be the end position. I've got my location. Get location at distal on spline, and get direction. Make sure that the world. Notice the tangent controls, vector multiplied by the float, and that goes to the start and end. And over here, this is the magic. So the default scene root, so you have to have a scene root, and you get its location, and you get the location at distance on the spine minus the world's location. That will give me the start and obviously the end position. And there you have it. 
So that was uh, took me about three days to figure out, but once I figured it out, it was really cool because it doesn't matter how many levels you go over, each level will work correctly. Now, hopefully that was helpful and obviously quick enough because otherwise um, I talk too much and uh, uh, I'll see you next time. Please ask questions if you have any questions because I like finding out some answers. <laughs> okay, see you.